Hey, this is Pastor Becky. It is a little late. Sorry about that. I just got back from going with my daughter to the library and um, to Target. And um, anyway, we, we were gone longer than we anticipated. So I apologize for the lateness. And you notice that I have Journey to Prosperity Day 22. And some of you who have been following are going, hey, wait a minute. I thought we were just going 21 days like the 21 day Daniel fast. Well, I'm having such great results. Um, hey, Pastor Keith, um, I'm having such great results, and God's been touching my heart so much, and if I'm not careful, and I know some of you will understand this, if I start to explain some of it to you, I'll get lost in God's presence, and I'm going to have a really difficult time um, explaining, you know, carrying on, but um, at any rate, um, so I just felt like I'm going to go another, um, you know, up to four, day 40, because that seems to be a number that might be good, and I may go 100. But, um, and what we're doing, just so you know, I'm not going without food. I'm not doing that. I'm eating a special diet, a um, special way of eating and, and rejecting. Like, I haven't had chocolate in a long time. <laughs> but there, no, sir, I really am a lot more stricter than just not eating chocolate. But um, feel great. And um, it's what I feel like we need to do. To, to do. And my, the, when I first started this fast, um, I the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know, he reminded me of the scripture, and again, you can go back and, and watch all the rest of them, but that um, fasting gets rid of unbelief. You know, it's not the demon that it gets rid of, or it, you don't twist God's arm with fasting, or um, but it, it, it builds us up. It does something for you and I um, that we can, you know, so we get a closer relationship with God that it draws us, it, it, it you know, pushes the flesh down and tell, you tell your flesh, um, you will obey me, you, you know, and this is what we're going to do. And the, the louder you scream about it, the longer I'm going. In this case, we were so blessed during this time. Um, we got to go to the winter camp meeting at um, Rodney, and, uh, Rodney and Adonica Howard Brown. Um, it's the river at Tampa Bay. Um, we got to attend a few meetings, and um, um, i got to be careful. But one of the things that he, he just a couple highlights, um, and the reason we went down on Wednesday, I hope I'm making sense, because what happened last time, if I start to go there, I actually get, and I hope you understand what this is, but drunk in the Holy Spirit, and I have a difficult time functioning and or making sense. So, Lord help me. But the, the, the Tuesday night I was watching it, they started singing an old hymn, um, oh, Consecrate my life to thee. I, oh, I can't remember that. Draw me near, near, precious Lord, to the cross where thou hast die, died. Draw me near, near, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Well, I was raised in church, so I know the old hymn. And a lot of you millennials and other people, you may never, if you weren't raised in church, it's an old hymn. But there was such an anointing on it, and I found myself, because generally when I go to these meetings, I will get, I'll laugh so hard that I'm just totally drunk in the spirit and sometimes have to be, you know, helped out because I can't walk. I'm certainly not going to drive. And so I was kind of anticipating that might be what happened, but... Tuesday night sitting in my home watching because they were live broadcasting I just began to weep and um, and because I do believe it's, it has a lot to do with a combination of things part of it being that I'm on this fast and I'm consecrating my heart and my life to God and I didn't recognize as I was singing um, God pointed out a couple things that I need to take care of that um, you know that I wasn't you know I'm not going to go into the whole thing because I would if God told me to it's, it's not that but um um, I will say this much. I mean, uh, he told me that there were some trust issues with between me and him, and um, it, well, obviously not in his end. He he, he totally trusts me, um, and I didn't know it. I really, if you'd asked me, and I thought no, and um, I have a whole testimony how God set me free from not trusting him and and all of that back years ago. So it was just a new level of trust because you know, just like they say, new level, new devil. Well, there's a new level of trust, and, and it's, you know, totally abandoning abandoning yourself to what his will. What does he want you to do? Where does he want you to live? Where does he want you to go? Does he want you to stay? What does he want you to say? Will you obey? Um, you know, it's that kind of thing, and and, um, and I had to re reevaluate, you know, did I trust him? And so, of course, we got that cleared up, but... We get down Wednesday, and we went all day Wednesday to the meetings, and here again, I'm thinking, I'm just going to, you know, be lighthearted, and I'm going to laugh in the spirit, or, you know, whatever, I'm going to have a good time, and I boo-hoo, 
through the Wednesday morning service. I boohooed through the Wednesday night service. And um, we went Thursday night, and I, I did. And so I, whatever was needed to be broken at that point was broken. And, um, and I thank you, Lord. And that's why I don't want to give up the progress I've made. And I'd like to hear from some of you. I don't know if you're, you know, if you haven't done, maybe you didn't even start. Start now. Go ahead. We're going to go another, um, you know, until day 40. So, and then baby 100. I, I'm just going to keep, I'm being led by the Spirit. So I don't want to just cap it at that. But for those that want to join, I, I encourage you to join. And, um, and it does, it gets rid of the unbelief because that's where, see, and I, that was my prayer from day one was Lord, I believe help my unbelief because there are some areas I have absolutely no doubt. I really don't. I just don't. There are other areas I struggle with and, um, how can that be? I don't know, but it is, <laughs> I don't have all the answers, but, um, and since that was my heart's cry, he answered it. He showed me this is an area where, you know, you, this is where the unbelief is. You're not trusting me. You don't have you haven't totally surrendered that area so I thank him I mean it's a beautiful thing some people people might think oh no no it what God's not like that you know the the, the time that he did um, deal with me about not trusting him I was um, I go I'm gonna I'll go into my mini hopefully mini uh, version of what happened to me but um my husband and I were I don't know how many years we had been married we had two toddlers oh, I think we had two toddlers anyway um, yeah, and sorry about that, but I got all the details, but, um, long story short, um, I got mad at my husband about something and, and, um, I know none of you, you know, and I see all the halos and I know some people like they, they never argue or they never have, um, intense fellowship was what we had had. But, but the one thing that would aggravate me the most is that we would have this intense fellowship and, um, and he'd go to sleep. And then I could, I mean, my blood was boiling. I couldn't sleep. And I, to this day, I can't even tell you what it was. It was probably something stupid that I was upset about in my 20s. And um, so I'm, I'm decided at that point we had the old kind of floors. We, and some, again, I'm, t you know, if you're too young, you probably don't even know about this, but you had to strip the wax off the kitchen floor to, so I was sweeping the floor. I was going to strip the wax off the floor and re-wax the floor because I had already learned when I get that upset, I might as well do something because I've got all kinds of energy and I need to put it to, to good work, if you know what I mean. You know, I mean, might as well use that. At least I had that much sense. And I had the television on in the, um, in the living room. I was in the kitchen and you can hear it. I couldn't see it from where we had it set up, but I, I could hear it. And, um, and they had all the people... Um, Mr. Crouch, Paul Crouch was interviewing um, Jerry Falwell who is now, both of them are in heaven and I'm like he's Baptist, what is he doing on TBN you know, the, the spirit-filled Pentecostal channel And um, but he has a distinct voice for anyone that knows that, and you just go just Google it Jerry Falwell, um, but you can Google it, he has a very distinct voice um, kind of like Walter Cronkite for some people that may be in the world back then that didn't know but some people just have a distinct voice, and you can tell if it's them speaking or not. And so I'm like, well, that is a, wow, that beats all for me, because I'm like, I never thought I would see him, the, these two men together. And um, so as I'm, I'm sweeping, I'm mad, I'm sweeping, I mean, I'm practically beating the floor, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm just like, uh, you know, just, <laughs> and, um, and again, I have no idea what I was upset about. And all of a sudden, I heard an audible voice, and it's, you know, sometimes you hear a voice that seems like it's audible. No, I heard an audible voice. And um, I was at the kitchen table at that point, sweeping right around. Mm -hmm. the, the, I just moved the chairs out of there. And I heard, Becky, do you trust me? I looked around. I knew, I mean, I knew it was God. It wasn't Jerry Falwell's voice. It wasn't Paul Crouch's voice. And I'm very good with, you know, hearing things, maybe because we're musical and I hear. And I'm like, okay. So I set my broom down and I go and I walk down the hall to see if my children are both asleep. I walk up to our bedroom and Eddie's still asleep. And I'm like, oh, I got to admit this is God and I'm not ready to do that. So I walk and, this, and I think of it now, it's just hilarious. But I walk over to where I laid the broom down because that's where I heard him. Like he was there. He wasn't you know, everywhere else in the house I was, which is hilarious because he was. But I get to the broom and I, I look up. And because he said, he didn't say, Becky, you don't trust me. He said, Becky, do you trust me? And I just wept. And I, because I, I said, no. I said, I'm so sorry, Lord. And I can't even, 
Uh, see, it's hard to, when you know, even I don't care how many years go by, when you have a, an encounter with God, the same things that, that you sense, the same presence of God that was there, at least for me, tend to revisit you. And it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to share. So I was like, no. And I felt so embarrassed. I was like, Lord, how, how could I not trust you? But I, yet I know I don't. And I asked him to forgive me. And I mean, I have, it was a major change in my life. And um, did I still struggle with not trusting at times? Yeah, but it was not the same. It was like, a, okay, I put, just like what happened to me this past week. He showed me, we took care of it, it's done. It, you know, the, but before it controlled me, that's a whole other thing. And, and I had already had, you know, my youth pastor said, Becky, do you know that faith, whatever's not a faith is a sin? Uh, that's not a sin, you know. And get, and don't be offended at me, but I, you know, back I was raised, you know, smoking cigarettes is a sin, drinking alcohol is a sin. Um, you know, having sex outside of marriage is a sin, you know, the Ten Commandments, but, you know, not having faith, that wasn't on my list of sins. So when God pointed that out to me, I had to, it, what? it is a sin. Not having, you know, tr not trusting God is that whatever's not a faith is a sin. That's absolutely the truth. And that's, a, that's scriptural. So um, my whole, t and so if you're struggling, whenever you watch this, I, I know that these things get watched later. And, um, and whether it's five minutes later, five months later, five years later. Um, it's a now word for you, and if you struggle with worry, if you struggle with, um, you know, even depression, it comes from worry. You, you're you're fearful, any kind of fear. Um, you can totally God will set you free immediately from all of that. So um, I didn't know I was going to share that, but that's part of what you know. We're, so God put His finger on another spot area in my life, and I realized after I, you know, that was Tuesday night, and after all day. Um, Wednesday and we were driving back home from Tampa and it's with if you lived in the central Florida area you'd realize the interstate that we travel on is just it's a it's under construction it is a mess so what would take normally an hour and 40 minutes or whatever it could take two two and a half hours on a good you know even in good traffic so we had plenty of time to think and all that drive time and um, I realized he could ask me anything and I would say yes and tr totally trust him uh, and you know, and I have to, I have, I, I would like to believe, oh, well, it's done, but you know what? We leak. So I'm just going to stay, you know, I just feel like I'm good with that. As long as I stay pressed into him, um, you know, the Bible said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. I believe that we take one step. He takes a hundred. I do. I just believe he's just ready to embrace us immediately, so, but we do have to press into God. We have to you know, go and be in his presence. And we need it every day, every minute, every second of every day. And, um, and you don't even recognize that you're getting cold because you can still operate in the anointing. And this is probably for some maybe more seasoned people, but you can still operate in the anointing and still be getting cold. And I didn't know that. And, um, um, a lot of things I don't know. And the older we get, the more we realize we don't know. But, but when I do know something, I hang on to it. And what I do know is God loves me, God loves you, and we can totally trust him with everything and anything that, that we need to, to take to him. And if he asks you to do something or to move or to change jobs or to go to, to college or to go take some remedial classes, um, you know, maybe he's telling you to you know, open a hair salon, you know, whatever, the, whatever he's saying. And it seems like, and most of the time when God asks you to do something and I'm sure Pastor Keith can concur. You don't have the finances. You don't have the abilities within yourself. And you, you, at least you're sitting there going, I, this is totally impossible for me to do this. Well, God likes us to be in that place because that goes back to that total trust. And then when it, the thing happens that he's telling you to do, you know it's him. There is no doubt in my heart that anybody who gets saved healed, delivered through watching these, because God told me to do these things, and I fought him for a long time, because I'm like, what if nobody even watches, no, you know, what if it doesn't make a difference, blah, 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 and, um, but we need to be obedient, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about the kingdom of God, seek first his kingdom, and all of his way of doing and being right, and then all those other things will be added to you, but it usually takes not just a little step of faith, I think if you're new in the Lord, a little step of faith will do, but as you get more seasoned and the longer you spend with him, he expects you to probably, um, you know, it, it, I, the best way I can describe it is I even saw myself like on a real high diving board, taking a dive 
into a pool that I could not see if there were what was water under me but yet I knew I was set free because I'm like here I come I know you're gonna catch me and and uh, again in the spirit realm I was envisioning this I could see it just like it was real and I was like you know you got it <laughs> you know and I stop and think about it the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna die and you're going to heaven Woohoo! I mean threaten me with heaven <laughs> so you know I just want to encourage you to if you want to go a few more days with a um, I know I'm going to go at least to day 40, maybe day 100, I'm, I, whatever he tells me to do. Um, anyway, I, th I was going to talk about something else. I'm going to throw that out. Following the Holy Spirit, he seems to do that, and then that's okay. That's, this is about him. It's not about us. Well, it's about us and that he wants to get a word to us and that he wants to minister to us and he wants us to know that we can trust him. He wants us to know that he loves us and he will never fail you. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. It says in Hebrews in the Amplified Version, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, never, no, never, no, never. It says it three times. That's how important it is. And I believe that may be one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. So he, you're never alone. He's got this. And if he's asking you to do something, just think about some of the things. Um, first of all, it should line up with the Word of God. But most things like, who do you marry, um, you know, should I buy that house, should I get into this career, or whatever, those, you really can't go to the Bible and say, oh, that's Zephaniah, verse, you know, whatever, the book of Hezekiah, verse 3, and then there's no book of Hezekiah, by the way, but, um, but you, you learn to hear that small inner voice and trust it, and, you know, will you make mistakes? Yeah, you will. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that, but yeah, do we make mistakes? We sure do. But you know what? He, he I, I say this every day too, and I, I have, once I heard that I heard um, Charles Cap say it, and I say it. He even makes my mistakes to prosper. So I realize even if I blow it, he can fix it. So, you know, we have really have nothing to be fearful about. We have nothing to be afraid, and we need to trust him. So I, I was going to say, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I was going to go down that path, but we're going into trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will. He will direct your path. So if you're still seeking him for direction, he's speaking to you. And um, one of the things for the camp meeting we went to is they kept praying that, <coughs> excuse me, that God would download the blueprint down to the finest detail. And I'm going to pray that for you too. So Father, we come into agreement. We pray that you would download our the blueprint for 2020 and for this decade down to the very last detail because that's what you want to do and lord that we would have the trust and the faith to carry it out in jesus name if you're not um 100 sure if you were to die tonight that you would or today whatever time it is when you're watching this that you'd go to heaven there really is a heaven to gain and there's a hell to avoid and um and the worst thing in the world is being in forever without god and i'm not going to go into all of that but um you want to go to heaven and then when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will give you heaven here on earth. That And heaven here on earth doesn't mean that you'll never have trouble because the, the Bible says in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. It goes back to trusting him. If you, you really, it's so basic. If we don't believe that God is not a man that he should lie, he doesn't lie. What he, what he says is it is so. It is. He, and so, you know, that with that basis is you can trust anything he says to you in the word. And this whole premise of what we started with was 3 John verse 3. Um, beloved, and I go, beloved Becky, and you should, you know, put your name in there. Beloved Keith, beloved whoever's watching. Beloved Becky, I wish above all things and above all things. And I caught that this time. I, you know, I've heard that scripture all my life. But above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But you cannot prosper if you don't trust God. You have to trust Him. It's a sin not to trust God. So we're gonna. I'm gonna pray for those people that are having trust issues. After we pray with the people that needs to receive Jesus first. So if you want to go to heaven when you die and you're not 100% sure, if it's I think so, I hope so. Well, my grandma took me to church. Then you're not sure. You need to pray this prayer with me. So say, Heavenly Father, I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I do. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. Father God, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. Hmm. Please forgive me. Take my life and do something fabulous with it. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit, with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. 
I'll never, ever be the same again. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me as a minister of the gospel, you are what I'm telling you, you are going to heaven when you die. It says in the book of Zephaniah, it's an Old Testament in the Bible, um, and it says that, that God dances over us with singing. So he's dancing over you with singing right now. The angels are rejoicing because you've accepted Jesus. We're rejoicing. The body of Christ is re and welcome into the family of God. You now have a new family. So welcome. I want to encourage you to get into a good Bible-believing church. Um, uh, if you're in Pennsylvania and, and Pastor Keith Ed Eggert's out there, we, we've got some friends out there. If you're not in the Central Florida area that we would love to direct you to because you want to get into a, a body of believers that will love on you, that will give you um, direction, that will, you know, they're called to their gift. God calls pastors, um, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles. He calls us a gift to the body of Christ. So they're gifts to you. And you should go ahead and, you know, take advantage of that. Amen. And um, and I know that, that they're called, as we work as a team together. We're on the same team, but we're, we're working towards mobilizing the body of Christ. So you can't be mobilized if you're not part of a group. you got to get in there. You've got to be face, not the FaceTime on what we're doing right now, literal FaceTime, breaking bread together, having, you know, we, we're going to go back this Sunday morning to having breakfast before we have service and because um, we're in a, we're in a ability to do that right now. And the, what it doesn't mean you have to, but it's so important to, to just have one-on-one -on -one real, really in touch with people. <laughs> anyway, I could go all the way down a rabbit trail with that. Cause I just had a conversation when I was at the library with one of the ladies there about, um, you know, we just, we miss that people time and, you know, it's nice to have this, but real, real anyway, if you prayed that welcome and you need to plug into a really, really, really spirit filled Bible believing church. And if we can answer any questions, if you're in the central Florida area, since we're in uh, right now, we're, we're, it's from our house to your house. We're, you know, in a temporary setting. Um, you need to find out where we're meeting, but we would love to meet you face to face and, um, and just, you know, shake some of your hands cause you don't like to hug, but I'm a hugger, get a hug. And, um, but anyway, and get to know, and you get to know people that are going to be lifelong friends. Um, and I even say this by the Spirit, whether you end up at Pastor Key's church or at our church, wherever. Um, some of you, seriously, your future mate is at, at that place. And you need to say, God, the blueprint that you're going to show me, show me where that place is. Because all the blessings are there. Wherever there is, that's where your blessings are. And if you're not there, you can't partake of all the blessings. So, um, the trust issue. If you've had trouble with um, an anxiety over trusting God, you're worrying, you're fretting, how am I going to pay the bills? Um, who am I supposed to marry? Should I get married? Should I get divorced? Um, what am I supposed to do with my, my child's on drugs? Um, I'm dealing with this um, this bad report from the doctor. Um, I, you know, I, I what's going to happen if I die and my, my child's not available? You know, who's going to take care of? The list can be ridiculously long. And I'm telling you right now, hey, Miss Evelyn, and I'm waving to her. The list could go on, and we worry. I don't care how old your children get; they're always your babies. <laughs> they're, you know, you're always gonna be tend. You you tend to want to fret or worry about them because you want the best for them. Just remember this: if you want the best for them, how much more does Father God want the best for us? Our Daddy God, He <laughs> He wants the best for us. And worrying and fretting will take years off of your life, put wrinkles on your face, and and literally you'll die. And um, we, so we need to, to get rid of the worry. And worry is a sin. Whatever is not a faith is sin. And I'm telling you, not worrying is way better. Um, and, and, if you, you know, and if you're feeling the weight of, of, and the pressure of it, the Bible says, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, his, burden is, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. A yoke is for when you're working. So it's, you know, it's easy. And his burden is light. If it feels like a, like a, you know, you're under a ton of bricks and this weight, you know, it's like push her down or push him down, push him down. That's the devil. And you're giving, you're trying to take care of something that wasn't, you weren't meant to take care of. You need to turn it over to God. And I'm not talking about being, you know, well, I don't need to get a job. Um, you know, God's going to take care of it. You know, not unless he tells you to do that, but most of the time he'll, she'll show you what job to get to provide, but he'll provide your job. Isn't your source. Your church isn't your source. Your um, your grandma or grandpa, whoever you know, whoever you see as your source, they really are not your source. God is your source, and you can trust Him. 
So if you're watching and you say, man, I just, I, I, I realize as you've been talking that um, I don't, I'm having trust issues with God and I want to, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, those people that are having, they just recognized, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm into worry, I'm into fear, I'm in fretting, I'm, an, an ang I'm anxious, I'm, I'm on, I have to take something to sleep, I have to take something, to, you know, uppers, downers, um, you know, I'm a wreck. Father, I just turn it all over to you, and I ask you to forgive me for the sin of worry. To say that, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for the sin of worry. I admit I haven't been trusting you. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, you should say, I trust you, Lord, with, and then if it's a person's name you need to, maybe you have a grocery list, but if it's a person's name or if it's a financial bill or if it's a physical need, say, Lord, I trust you with, um, you know, that, that by your stripes, First Peter 2.24, I was healed, I am healed. You know, cancer is not the, not the final verdict. You are. You said I'm healed. Um, I trust you, Lord, that um, you will supply all my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, that this financial need has already been taken care of. He's already provided whatever you need. And just turn it over. And, you know, there was a song, turn it over to Jesus. <laughs> Old song again. Um, but And you will smile the rest of the way. The truth is, <laughs> you just give it over to him and release it. And one of the things that God spoke to me, and I just heard the Holy Spirit say to share this, when my husband and I were going through hard times because he, you know, he wasn't living the way he should have been living at the time, and I was ready to leave him. And um, again, it was during probably during that time where I had this whole episode, actually, during that time, and because um, we, we were, had two small toddlers. And I was raised that, um, and I'm not, there's therefore now no condemnation, so do not receive condemnation from what I'm about to say. But I, um, I was raised that you would be better off to kill somebody than get a divorce. That's just the way we were raised. And so, uh, literally, I would, I would have gotten more forgiveness from my family had I killed my husband or somebody uh, than if I had gotten divorced. And so I was sitting there, and it had gotten so bad. And um, he, he's got his own testimony, which he had this anger problem, and, and I was afraid of him. I was, he was getting closer and closer to where I wasn't sure I wasn't going to be. Um, in fear of my life and um, and I was sitting there one day he, he was at work and I had the kids and, and they, I put him down for a nap so I was praying and I, I was like God I, I don't believe in divorce um, but I do believe that you'll kill him <laughs> I did I did and I meant it with, because of um, Nabal was a fool and Abigail you know ended up marrying King David if you don't know the story I'm not going to go into the whole thing but God required Nabal's life because he was a fool, and then Nabal, and then Abigail was able to move on with her life, <laughs> and so I believed it. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, hmm, "I'm sorry." He said, "If I can't do anything with Eddie, what do you think you're going to do?" Sobering. I gave Eddie to Jesus. Four months later, it started. Once I released, now somebody needs to hear this. Listen to what I'm saying. If you're holding on to the problem, if you're if, if you're having a, especially a relational problem and you're holding on, but any kind of problem, but this is, if you're holding on, you're tying up God's hands because you're in the way. I was in the way. I wasn't allowing God to do what he needed to do with my husband so that he could work this thing out. And, um, and my business, to be honest with you, was to let God work on me, uh, you know, None of us are perfect. So I needed to be in the business of releasing my husband to God and then saying, God, all right, what do I need to do to be a better wife? What do I need to do to be a better mother? What do I need to be a, well, mostly the best, well done, well good, and faithful servant? Um, that's my business. He wasn't my business, not that way. So once I realized that, I relinquished him to God and form what God started dealing with him. You can hear his side of the story sometime. But God started dealing with him, and, and um, God set up a, a service. It was just all God. We didn't even speak for four months. We, we lived in the same house. I, you know, got up, made breakfast. He left. My, you know, I made dinner. We, I would eat with the kids because I didn't want to eat with him. And when he got home, it would be there. He ate, then I would clean it up. But we, we just kind of walked, you know, ships passing in the night for real. And, uh, but it was at least peaceful. 
for whatever reason, God had already started dealing with him. And my not saying anything helped God be able to say what he needed to say. And four months later, there was a service. God totally set him free. He was delivered. He got baptized, rebaptized in water that next, that following Wednesday night from that Sunday. And I was watching, and you could see a light shining. We, the church we went attended was a, it had a television ministry, and um, and I thought they they have the cameras on, and I looked, and there were no cameras, and there was the, the you know the television lighting wasn't on, but there was a light that shone out of the um, the baptismal tank and um and eddie said later he was telling me he said it felt like i was standing next to me um watching because he he was so overwhelmed and we hadn't had that many encounters with the holy spirit yet at that time um because the church we went to was spirit filled but not so much and unfortunately i'm going to say this some of you are attending to the not so much spirit filled church it's time to get out I'm t I mean, I, I'm on fire about that. We need to get into some glory-filled places where the Holy Spirit is allowed to rule and reign and have his full, full, full ability to do whatever he wants to do. Throw out the clock, throw out the, throw out the agenda, and let God move and have his way. It's his church. Jesus builds a church. We don't. We need to let God be God. And if you're going into one of those, how many have seen that commercial? And I, like, I, like you could answer me, but... Um, it's it's a, it's just okay. Just okay is not enough. You know, where that the doctor coming in and the nurse is prepping the guy for surgery and his wife sitting there and um oh I just got re and the doctor walks in the room, just got my reinstatement and um and basically I forgot what it was, but it basically said he knew he was going to he well I, doc, is it gonna be okay? I hope yeah, it should, I hope it's gonna be okay and and it ends up with just okay is not enough. I'm probably botching up the commercial, but just okay is not enough with God either. We need to fully 100% run into his arms, run into his presence, quit trying to tell him what to do, and let him be be the one that's leading the way, follow what he tells us to do, and and quit going to churches that pretend that they, you know, having the power, uh, or having, I can't remember the scripture, but it talks about denying the power thereof. You know, they say they're all this in name, but they have no power to back it up. You can say you're um, a, a car, but if you, you know, and, and go sit in your garage and say, I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car, but it doesn't make you a car. You're not a car. You're a human being. And you can say you're a spirit-filled church all you want, but if the, if, you know, where's the beef? You know, where, where's the, the, the proof of, you know, that you really are spirit-filled? And, um, and a lot of people are just, they're just hanging on and putting up with, I don't know why. It's time to, to, you need to find a church that's on fire for God that lets the glory of God just fill the, the temple. Our, this is your temple and the building that you're going to be meeting in because we, the church, are, are people make the church not a building. And we need to allow God to be God. But anyway, that was from the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan to say that, but um, trust God. And, and, and some of you just need to trust God and, and um, he will lead you to the place where God's moving. And, and you need to be the place where God's moving. You know, even us, we should all be walking revivals wherever we go. Amen? So, trust God. I had no plan to say any of this. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. And um, we'll be back tomorrow because to, this is day 22. Tomorrow will be day 23, and I'm going to go till day 40 and, and then beyond if that's what he says because it's working. And I don't know about you, but I need everything I can receive from the Lord. I need Him, and I'm talking about Him the stuff will come. I'm seeking him, his face. Not really. I'm really not seeking his hand. I'm seeking his face, especially the longer this goes, because he's just he'll direct your steps. He'll give you that blueprint. He'll give you the down to the very finest details so that you know how to proceed. And um, and I did hear the Holy Spirit say, and, and Pastor Keith's watching this for us pastors. It's time to mobilize the body, and um, you know that. So I'm glad he's healing, bringing healing in our, you know, in me. And um, again, thanks for watching. Um, uh, love you all. I hope that this has helped somebody. If you need more, further prayer, you can go to transformationchurch.com. You can see the logo up there. Um, it's transformation, trans444, um, transformation.com.com.com. .com .com. Um, and we've got a contact us page. We have a giving page. And oh, and by the way, on the giving page, we have a, um, a tithing and offering declaration that that you might want to say over your finances every day. That's why we have it there. We also did a, a, a vow of prosperity 
that I'm, I'm going to try and get a copy and put it on the website. Um, but we took a vow of prosperity at the camp meeting I was just at. You know, people take vow of poverty. Well, we took a vow of prosperity. And this is our journey to prosperity. I'm like, I see how so many things are just, he's putting it together. You couldn't, you couldn't make this stuff up. You couldn't plan this well on your own. God's doing it. It's all him. And, um, and to him be the glory, great things he's done. And I love it because for, he has, he gets the glory and if it doesn't work, I, it's not my problem either. <laughs> not my problem. Not your problem. It's, it's all God. Um, all we have to do is surrender and trust him. Do what he tells you to do. Say what he tells you to say. Go where he tells you to go. In fact, um, I want to... Lord, is that what you're saying to do? Um, maybe we'll do that tomorrow night. All right. Well, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And share, like, heart. Um, and I'm just grateful that 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 um, we have this time together. And, oh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can have some real face time. Um, and maybe we'll... Maybe we'll have an event where we can plan it ahead of, you know, enough ahead of time so everybody can meet somewhere. Love you guys. Bye. Again, Pastor Becky, Transformation Church, Central Florida area. Come see us. And if you're living in another area, contact us. And if we know somebody in the area, we will send you there because there are some really awesome churches out there with pastors who will love on you, who will fill, or who are so filled and overflowing with the Holy Ghost and can impart into you. Woo! I'm getting excited thinking about it. All right. Love you. Bye.